Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Peter and Eloisa Lytton Hitchens on the issues of arrogance and compliance in relationship. The session was recorded on the 21st of October 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session one, part one. Welcome to everybody again today. Myself and Mary are doing another feedback session with a couple today. But uh, before we proceed with the feedback session, we'd like to just uh, remind everybody who's viewing that these couples and, and individuals who come in for feedback sessions are very brave people. And, uh, and we feel that you should respect their <laughs> time and their, and their effort and also their openness and their, uh, their ability to disclose eventually to the world <laughs> all of their not personal, to make you nervous. <laughs> all of their personal idiosyncrasies and flaws as well as all of their good points of course that'll get shown but um you know obviously when we have these feedback sessions we're focusing on the aspects of love truth and humility that anybody might need to work through with regard to the information we give them and we feel that these people really deserve our honour and respect. And so we hope that you can give them the due honour and respect that they deserve too. Um, but today what we're going to do is have a feedback session with Peter and Eloisa Lytton Hitchens. And perhaps what we should do first is just uh, ask you guys a few questions for the audience's sake, because many of them would not have met you. Um, we've known you for a long time, but let's, uh, let's start by asking a few basic questions that uh, the audience may not know and uh, just about your lives and so forth so so how long have you guys been listening to divine truth at this point do you think it's five years five, five or to six five, nearly six years yeah yeah, yeah. and to, to be honest the first year or so was really dodgy so, <laughs> so we don't count it. so it was like a, a, a big, big drag time at the start well, you ask how long have been listening in comparison to how, how long, long we seriously been, been listening yeah. is probably about two and a half years that yeah. we're like okay we really want to start it's the last two and a half years i feel like there's started to be the changes so with our kids and with each other yeah. and starting to look at things is really so initially you would sort of tire kicking and checking things out well, well no I, yeah there was that but also initially it was like oh these are really cool concepts but now it's like oh crap <laughs> these are cool concepts but they relate to us yeah exactly and so yeah. yeah the last two years for that. very good now you've been married how long have you been married for um eight years eight years yeah and uh you've got children how many children we've got three, three. children yeah um, what are they two so, boys and a girl yeah so yeah. isabella's eight archie charlie's coming up seven yep and archie's five. five yeah and when we first met you of course you were pregnant with a few of them so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you had titties, and, then a big yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you had you had all three of your kids as people would hear very close together yeah, yeah. 16 just... months between each of them yeah so, so three years total and yeah. it was all done we used to <laughs> joke that i was on a breeding program oh, on a breeding so i came to the farm to go on a breeding program with peach <laughs> Because you've had a big sheep yeah. station, haven't yeah. you? You've been yeah. living on And Pete's sheep would be like practicing breathing. I'd be like, yeah, they can do it. Just pop one out. <laughs> I should be able to do it. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> but, but what actually happened when you had three kids that close together? Um, well, <laughs> we had all these ideals and expectations and demands, I suppose. We thought that we were just honest and lovely. And then once the kids came, our whole lives just went to crap, really. Um, significantly changed. Yeah. Significantly changed and, and not well. It was almost <laughs> like, I suppose our facades were totally confronted without our knowledge, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so every single thing we'd been trying to pretend we didn't have or that we were better in or whatever was, yeah, was totally brought to the foreground. But we didn't even recognise it. No. If that makes sense, until we kind of found divine truth and began actually going, oh. What's the cause of all this? Yeah. yeah. If you asked us at the time, I think we would have thought we were a great little team, but basically we had two set jobs. Like I ran the property and the business yeah. side and I always looked after the kids well, sort of yeah. thing. Let's be honest. That's what we agreed to at <laughs> the beginning. And then once I had the kid, it was Pete should do the property. <laughs> Pete should look after me. Pete should look after the kids. Pete should be ignorant. And I should just be able to sleep and eat. And, <laughs> Feed the and, kids. And, and have no sex and do exactly what I want when I want. Thank you very much. But it was, I was pretty nasty. Yeah. Actually. When we met you, I can remember you were fairly <laughs> what I'd classify as full on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and really very cool. angry. Very angry. Very angry. Very and, angry. 
And um, and obviously that's changed quite significantly over the last five years because we feel you're quite a lot different than when we first met you. Yeah. Um, so you've had some changes in your lives, haven't you? Yeah. you? Also, when we first met you, by the time the third child came along, you were basically being bossed around by all of your children. Your whole life was yeah. pretty much... Yeah. Eloisa, doing that was your, particularly your life, Eloisa, yeah. was pretty much yeah. doing whatever the kids wanted. And what? it was impossible, in fact, I remember, to have a conversation with you without having two screaming boys. And, <laughs> and like hanging, hanging off, on like, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of what we went through initially was what's all the emotions going on there that caused them to do that. And, and you started looking at this issue, didn't you, of of you know how much you let men in particular get away with things in your life and mm. and that was coming out with the boys quite significantly like ruling our life yeah like, there wasn't there was I, one yeah. i thought it was a good mum thing like i was a good mum if i did whatever they wanted yes but i was just exhausted and pretty much i think i was just absent most of the time, most like, the time disassociated yeah. or out of body yeah, and with Pete, um, because your family has had a significant amount of spirit uh, interaction, you, you, you're pretty open to seeing spirits and hearing spirits and so forth, and your mum and dad both are as well. Then your, all of your children are as well, and particularly yeah. your two boys. And, then, and so, of course, they are very, very influenced by spirits in that place, and so they used to get up quite a lot of mischief. Yeah. Um, and we, we, were, we were we terrified at times. Like, <laughs> yeah. like we were the parents and it was like we were scared of oh, these no, kids. We were, and it didn't feel like three kids, it felt like 15 kids or 20 kids sometimes. I was like, yeah. man, like, yeah. they never get tired. They've got and all they these didn't? little personalities. <laughs> yeah. And they used to ruin everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd be like, but when I say they, I would allow them to ruin everything as well. So we've got to be really honest here, I feel. I agree. About yeah. the fact that it's not their problem. It was... Our creation. problem. I felt it was all my problem, to be well, honest. Well, initially there was the belief it was their problem, wasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then yeah. you started to see, no, there's an emotion or yeah. denial of emotion inside of me that causes this. And yes. as soon as you started addressing that, the yeah. kids started changing. And then it was also when you started addressing this issue of spirits influence over your children yes. as well and, and restricting your children yeah. from bad behaviour. Then, then of course, that had a significant effect on how much spirit influence your children had. Mm -hmm. Like significant like yeah. changed so you went from going uh, dreading going shopping to now yeah. going shopping is, uh, is fine and like, the kids love shopping now too yeah. they shop yeah. now. and they're responsible shoppers now yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they want to get all the things. Things. whereas before yeah. they'd pull down everything and yeah. destroy everything and they're and they're actually really nice like if you say no they're okay with that now <clears> like, <throat> whereas before it was like a tantrum or a, yeah yeah so everything was about demanding things from you yes. and expecting things from you and you just doing whatever they wanted yes. So that was a big part, of, and that's an area that you, in your life that's changed quite significantly yeah. because you, you have far better behaved children now than you've ever had <laughs> when we yeah. first met you. Well, today while we're talking, they're sitting outside doing just doing playing thing, or doing yeah. their schoolwork or whatever, and six years ago that would be unheard of, wouldn't yeah. it, or that even would a few years ago. We wouldn't yeah. have been able to have this interview. No. no. I was going to say that was yeah. something, though, that you really helped up or me with was the fact that you would sit there and you would still engage a conversation even when there wasn't really a conversation happening. Even when the kids were just screaming their heads yeah, off. Yeah, and you would just encourage me to go, what Feel are like, you feeling? Yeah. What are you feeling? And even remember when I would say, like when I was honest and hit them, like it was like, I feel just like whatever, they would immediately stop and they'd walk off. Yeah. And I remember that happened and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> And then it was after that that I went, oh, no, okay. And then we started practicing. So you started things. seeing the relationship between yes. what you were suppressing yes. as a feeling. Yes. And all you really had to start doing is recognising or becoming aware of those feelings. And then all of a sudden, yeah. the children change as soon as you become aware. And then as soon as you started to tune awareness, they came back and did the same thing again. Immediately. And, and it was like you started to see this relationship. And I, I sort of feel like, in a, long, a lot of ways, that's one of the things that helped you guys see the importance of what you're being taught, in a way. Wasn't totally. It? Yeah, because yeah. you can see... With our kids. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can see the changes. Because it's like, actually, this stuff actually does work. Yeah. And you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't even have to feel an emotion for it to work. No. It was like the truth made a diff an impact immediately. Yes. Mm. And that was something for me that was huge. Yeah. Because I'd never... Um, I just, I felt out of control. Like you probably could have called it postnatal depression. You probably could have called it whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and also post-traumatic stress syndrome because I, you know, remembered that I was being sexually abused when I was a kid. Yeah. And because of all of those things, it was like I'd just been in so much fear and denial about everything that suddenly I was like, oh, hold on. Like 
final like I don't didn't think I, I'm not really a seeker or yeah. not consciously well, you are I now. think you are I am now yeah. <laughs> but not in the past in the past I haven't really I've been always afraid of mm-hmm. of anything really or in case I don't know just fear about it mm-hmm. whereas this I suddenly like no it works like all I've got to do is like it was so simple I suppose mm-hmm. and that really appealed to me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would you want to say? <laughs> I was just going to say if we can maybe just come to today yeah. yes. and you guys are here to get some feedback. Yes. What do you feel are the issues for you both? And it's about your relationship yeah. really that you're here today, isn't it? What do you feel are the issues at the moment? I think for myself, like as we just talked about going through that whole stage, I think it got to a point where I got over the whole scenario stuff. When you say got over? You, you got mean? over, well, just I guess... Um, it got to the point where like trying so hard to keep everything together all the time and because I actually haven't felt stuff, you know, there's, I've started to put a lot of blame into, you know, why things are going the way they are rather than wanting to look at my stuff. So, yeah. so I feel as far as our relationship's been, it's been a lot about blame of what Eloise has done to me rather than, you know, how I can make things better. Yeah. Yeah. And I just... Got, got to a place where I just got quite cranky at times mm-hmm. and quite disillusioned at times of just where it is or even to the point of nearly sort of getting to that point where I feel like there's certain things that I just can't change anymore or that I've just got to accept that that's the way it is. So like, you either got to choose to accept or leave or... Yeah, you know, so... You've got no... Because if I... Otherwise, I've got to feel all this stuff and I haven't... <laughs> up until recently, I haven't even been wanting to look at that stuff or yeah. even be open to seeing that stuff. So just to clarify, you're saying there's issues in the relationship that you feel dissatisfied about yeah. and you felt like, I either have to accept it's going to be like this forever or leave because I don't want to feel about how it is. Well, is yeah, well, mean? and for me, obviously, too, uh, the emotional side of, you know, um, I've been extremely blocked to feeling emotions from day one, really. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that's always been my, I guess, my monkey as far as divine truth being. It's like, how <laughs> do you I... say have... monkey, you... it's on my back. Monkey, monkey, on, your back. monkey yeah. on your back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's like, that's always been the one. It's like, how, how do I get to this point where I can... Because sometimes you guys or Eloise will ask me how I'm feeling. I was like, what? Like, I've got no idea. I, I'm not even aware of how I'm feeling. Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. it's caused yeah. huge problems. And obviously, you know, something you guys have been talking to me a lot about lately is my arrogance as far as feeling like I just know stuff. Yeah. And, you know, like at the moment, like I'm not aware often when I'm arrogant or when I just simply... When it, feel, it feels normal to you. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, I, not picking up on it. Yeah. And that's been quite concerning to me as well. Yeah, just for sure. time. And for yourself, Eloisa? Um, I, well, I thank you for having us. For <laughs> it's our pleasure. Today. Yeah. Like, really. We love talking to you, yeah. you know that. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, yeah, and I love talking to you. But um, I'm just really sad mm-hmm. about our relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, my own lack of humility on a couple of huge issues, well, I feel they're huge issues, mm-hmm. um, is causing me to, to, um, I want Pete to feel his stuff before I want to feel my stuff. And mm-hmm. I just, I suppose I could go into a whole, but I, th- I think the real reason that we're here or would love some feedback on it is the fact that we got to a place where we've been hurting each other for a long time mm-hmm. and that we're getting to a point where it I'm beginning to open up to the hurt. Mm-hmm. And I think Pete, Pete feels very hurt and sad as well, but mm-hmm. he sort of feels resentful and, and distances, mm-hmm. as, as do I. Mm-hmm. But it's going to get to a point where we're not, we need to do something about our relationship if mm-hmm. we're going to actually have a relationship. And the mm-hmm. moment we don't really have a relationship, we mm-hmm. have a codependent, addictive, um, sometimes trying to grapple with truth, but a lot of more ba- fear-based stuff mm-hmm. um, rather than what so there are moments out there that you have that are good yeah, yeah. Oh, we like, like, the we beautiful thing things. is for me like and i always say it to eloisa <laughs> like i just feel really lucky because i actually like eloisa more than when i first met her or when we got married like <laughs> we got all this it's like we got all this baggage well, it's she's just, a lot less angry now than she was then. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and there's all these lovely things that come from Eloisa now that, that weren't there before. So yeah. it's like, it's just, 
there's all this baggage in the center between us that's yeah, sort yeah. of getting into a way yeah. Yeah. with all this yeah. really nice when stuff. it's not there we're excited and we want to do things we have projects and we really like each other and we're great at planning yeah. and then that turns pete on and i'm like <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then i'm like and then the, you know yeah the, you know the poo hits a fan, so to speak, as a colloquialism <laughs> goes. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> you know, I feel bad about swearing. I, I, I think so, I do it. <laughs> no, you you I would if I can. wasn't having cameras. Yeah. <laughs> so this shit hits the fan. But it's yeah. like sometimes it's like, man, we're just really tragic because it's like we like each other, so why aren't and we? And that's what makes yeah. it even worse because In what you. Way? It you makes feel it worse because I know that when I've done, like, I can feel when I've been not in everything. There's things I can't see yet yeah. still, mm -hmm. but in things I can see, I can feel I've hurt Pete, yeah. or I can feel that I have directly not wanted to feel something, and in doing that, the consequence now of what that does to him. Yes. And that is beginning. Which to is more the way you hurt him, isn't it? Uh, like you yes. don't you don't set out to hurt Pete no. generally. No. What is really happening is there are things that you're afraid of dealing with inside yes. of yourself. And when you withdraw from dealing with those things, then you can also feel the hurt that that has towards Pete. Yeah. And, and the same occurs vice versa. Yeah, yeah. it just feels awful. Like yeah. in the moment, obviously, we have all that stuff happening. But yeah. afterwards, you just feel terrible. Yeah. Like and it really yeah. does feel hurt. Yeah. Like, and it's not just us. It's the children. And that's starting to physically play out as well. Of course. And, yeah. and so when I, I just mention that because it's not... I'm seeing the impact of my actions on Pete, on the kids, literally on a natural environment yeah. and beginning on others as well, you yeah. know, of yeah. who you attract and what yeah. happens. Because on that note too, for myself, it's like when you're stewing in all this emotional stuff, like we're not, I'm not a nice dad, like I'm not, yeah. I'm not there for my kids. Whereas yeah. the other times, like, you know, we all love hanging out with each other and you have great times. Whereas yeah. when you're in this in the stewing side of it, it's like yeah. everybody suffers around you. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Yeah, and I, I suppose it's important at this stage, before we begin chat, chatting about these things, is that we talked yesterday, didn't we? You, you, we invited you yesterday to be a part of the partner relationship session three yeah, uh, awesome. that we did on the FAQ sessions. And so you got to hear a little bit of uh, those kind of sessions. And I know that you've, for some homework, you've watched one and two yep. of partner yeah. relationships, so that's really good. So, and we would suggest, of course, for the, any person in a relationship or even out of a relationship to watch those particular videos sure. too, because they give you a lot of guidance as to where, where to go. But what we're going to do today is focus more on some practical things that you've raised and then link back to a lot of the material we've presented in one, two and three of the sessions cool. of partner mm -hmm. relationships. Just in, in order to work through the different issues. But before we begin that process, um, I feel one of the things that is really good about both of you now is that you're now starting to see, and particularly yourself, Eloisa, can see probably a bit better than Pete at this stage, the importance of addressing an emotion mm -hmm. and the effect it has on your life. So, so you can see that unless some kind of emotions change here, then no real change is going to be possible. No. So that, that's a very important thing to recognise. And, and we feel that the average couple don't recognise that very well or, or at all at this stage. And, but that's the, one of the first things you need to understand is how the soul works. You can't change something through force of effort, what we call willpower. <laughs> We've tried. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've both tried, right? And, and you sometimes are successful. But but you it's generally revert, and it's short lived. <laughs> it's isn't it? yeah, short -lived. Yeah. You generally revert back to the old behaviour um, under pressure, right? Yeah, I've tried to be really good. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't all that work that well sometimes. So. No, dude, one thing comes up, it's like, oh, oh man, yeah, I right. sucked in again. <laughs> exactly, and and you guys have been under a lot of spirit pressure too, obviously, because you you've had spirit pressure around you. Uh, in your environment, you know, uh, because of mum and dad being an open spirit pressure as well. And then, of course, because of your own openness, Pete, you, there is that openness to get influenced by them as well. So there's been a lot of pressure on you too. Um, but what we're hoping to do is just discuss mm. some of the practical issues uh, and then what kind of soul-based changes can be made. Yeah, it's like when we do get, well, when I get cranky or when we avoid these feelings, that's when you really notice, like, the spirit stuff's really trying to break you up break mm. us up and yeah. sometimes we yeah. even talk to each other it's like we well, just got to stop now because it's like it's you can really feel that you can feel that because it's like it's stuff that's not us but you might start saying something gets right out of hand then 
Well, and it does. It yeah, escalates. Yeah. More, more feelings that um, both of us tend to detune rather than have verbal fights. We're passive aggressive fighters. Yeah. yeah. So we don't so, scream so much. So you don't scream just, and argue, but you yeah. tend to run away from each We're other. We're beginning to have some arguments yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, no, 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 that's actually an improvement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It we, is. We talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the passive aggressive thing is what most couples do. You know, they step away from each other yes. using a different number of different techniques. And the problem with those techniques is all they do is put further barriers between you. They don't, they don't, they don't help in assist in your personal perfection, your goals of personal perfection, and they also don't assist with the goals of perfecting your relationship. Because for the first six years or so, we really didn't fight at all. So this is a whole like this is a pretty terrifying <laughs> thing we're in because yeah. basically, we, as soon as it came to a fight, before we just went, I said, yeah, you went, ways. To, you went to work. And <laughs> I got to go out to the paddock, and <laughs> I need to go do the stuff with the kids, and so yeah, yeah. and off you go. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think it's also important at, at this stage to point out that the importance of addressing these issues for your future. Obviously, the beauty of discussing them now is that you you are starting to see that you don't you don't want to end up in relationships like you've observed other people around you have, which are basically each of them you know, believing nothing can really change from this point and we've either got to live with it how it is or or find another partner and go through the whole thing again. And you both have enough love for each other to try to work through the issues. So, you know, that's a really good thing. The other thing I would like to point out is that myself and Mary love to help couples stay in their relationship. Yeah, yeah. So it's completely the opposite of what we've been accused of doing, of course. But um, the reason why is we enjoy our relationship so much and we feel that and we feel that people in the end can have really lovely, enjoyable yeah. relationships if they practice the principles of truth in the relationship, particularly God's principles of truth. And so that's what we want to encourage you to do yeah, today. That's one thing we always say yeah. about divine truth when we're talking about you guys is basically if it wasn't for you guys, I don't We'd feel either of us would be still together even yeah. now, like just with what happened with the kids and the stress and the turmoil. Because it's like yeah. we knew we were doing something that was really affecting our kids, but we didn't know what, yeah. what no, to do about it. also each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I hadn't have dealt with some stuff, I'd have just been too angry to be with. Yeah. yeah, when we first met you, I, I, I don't know if I could have lived with you longer than a day. So, no. <laughs> um, I don't blame you. <laughs> and Pete obviously had a fairly high tolerance of an angry woman when he first met you. And, and that's part of the issue, Pete, what you do under those circumstances is a learned behaviour that, you know, now you've, you've sort of gotten the pattern of keeping even though she's no longer angry with you. So, so um, the other thing I'd like to just briefly mention, I feel, is that, um, you know, we're going to make some suggestions today that are, you know, and also say, give some feedback that, that the average person would probably not cope with very well. <laughs> and um, it's going to be fairly direct. So uh, um, we're also able to stop at any time. Yeah. So, so you've got time to work your way through or process what we're saying. And, and we can have a session one, two and three if you want. <laughs> we've, we've got a number of things we'd like to raise and, yeah. and discuss with you. Um, and, and then perhaps you know you might need some time to digest them and work th through them before we have another session that might help you further does that make sense cool, yeah. so so we've got a long list of things that we're going to give to you <laughs> and obviously but we'll give that to you separate to to the discussion today yeah cool oh, obviously we know you guys really well so yes this is why we we can give you very specific and direct yes. feedback um, it's not just based on our little conversation <laughs> we have now. Yeah. And, and we, well, I desire direct feedback because yeah. it's the most helpful yeah. thing that's actually changed our lives. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get started. Awesome. You raised an issue in your introduction, Peter, about the arrogance that you don't really realise you have. Yep. Um, and do you understand why you have it? Sometimes I understand it. Like, um, I mean, I guess I understand that what arrogance is this superior thing. Yes. Um, so could you describe what you would call arrogance? To me, when I feel like I'm arrogant myself, it's when I feel like, like um, sometimes I, it's like there's this feeling that comes over me that, that I have um, an all-knowing um, answer I guess you'd, you'd mm -hmm. say to it. That you're right and other people are wrong? Is that the main thing do you feel or? You know the truth. You know yeah, I think the there's more, there's an attitude thing there too I think yeah. you know, yeah. as far as an attitude like I know in the past like with the property and stuff like that there was a real attitude of 
thinking that I didn't have to worry about anyone else or, or like uh, I can do whatever I want or yeah. like, you know, like I'm above, you know, doing what everyone else has yeah. to do. So you're used yeah. to running a multi-million dollar operation. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, obviously means that you've borne responsibility for a long period of time. I think we're, like I've been thinking about like in the last few weeks and I think for myself with the arrogance where I get confused with it is in the fact that there's a big component of me that doesn't, feel like I'm very much at all. I agree. So it's like this real contradiction in the fact that it is, yeah. you're betraying one side of it. And I was thinking like, I think with some of my arrogance, like I did a lot of Anthony Robbins type um, courses when I was about 18, 19 to about 22 yep. in that air period then, which is a very, you know, you're pretty open to receiving information sort of thing. And yep. I think in that time it was like, yeah, you can just get in there and do whatever and override everything. And I think yep. that's where I think like this, this basically putting an image to the world that you're, everything's all cool and perfect and underneath, you know, you, you're feel, uncertain. you feel minute <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think that's where some of that has come from then. So um, in terms of the uh, the actual true cause though, which is in your childhood, you're not certain about that? No, I, I, like with, with <laughs> mum and dad and where that comes from there, no, I don't, mm. I don't sort of click on it. And um, what was the kind of relationship you had with your mum? Basically with mum was that you, you did whatever she said. Right. Um, and that mum was basically, I guess as a kid, she was our God really in a way. So yeah. where, you know, whatever mum said went, like dad didn't have much influence on us as kids. So, yeah. so whatever mum did, we, I was, me and my brothers were pretty terrified of my mum as far as like you knew that if you, you know, got out of line or something that, you know, there was going to be a consequence consequences for that. So it was very much a, di a dictatorship or a very, um, what's the word, very controlling. Very sort of firm control. Firm, yeah. Yeah. And, um, but if you compare yourself with your brothers, yeah. um, do you, who do you feel was the fa mum's favourite? Um, well, I was always told that I was the favourite. Right. And who told you that? Everybody. <laughs> okay. and, 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 and Including I always, or? <laughs> Well, no, well, mum sort of justified, I guess, for myself. I mean, I'll, the reason I always felt I was the favourite was just because I was trying to please everyone and trying to keep the peace. Right. And so because I... You know, I, as a kid, had this natural thing of, you know, I used to get really distressed when there was fighting or when there was bickering or when, you know, so I was always trying to be, I guess, the good boy sort of thing scenario. Yeah. And what kind of feelings did your mum give you when you were trying to be a good boy all the time? The, 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 that was a that was what I needed to be. It was like a confirmation feeling that... If, that you if, were a good boy? Yeah, yeah. 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 As far as it was, I guess that... It was like basically if I did what say mum wanted or I, I made every effort to please all those around me, then, then I was loved. And how do you, do you feel your dad feels about women? Dad? Yeah. Um, dad's sort of, I don't feel that dad really sees them as an equal or as, um, it's like it's a part of his relationship, but he doesn't wake up in the morning thinking, about you know how he's going to be with his girl for the day and what yeah. they're going to do together and all that. It's, yeah. it's it's more that a woman has a set role and a set place, and mm. you know she feeds and cooks and does all the ba so it's more of a um, it's not it's not like a relationship connection that I guess that I've always desired. Say with Eliza, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, could you you'd say that he has some feelings of superiority over women in that regard? Um. Yeah, and I, I find that quite interesting too because it's like yeah. he's terrified of women at the he same is. time. Yeah. So he it's is. like. Perhaps if we say it this way, he's quite condescending to women about yeah. their female nature, isn't he? Yeah, it's about emotional. Yes, yeah, so, about emotions. So, yeah. yeah, as far as with emotions, like if, if I had emotion and feelings as a kid, like I've lost it, you know, you're, you're losing it or you, you know, you've got to. Yeah, you know, as a boy especially, you know, if if I start connecting emotionally or you know, yeah. feeling or yeah, you know, that that I'm no longer you know in control. Like there's this huge thing between control and emotion for myself. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and especially then going to boarding school where you know, like when you're being bullied, you know, you don't want to cry. You want to whatever happens, yep. make sure that you don't get emotionally into it. Yeah. And yeah. So yep. yeah, I've had a lot of time. So you could say through a lot of your life, particularly your formative years, that that both parents have really given you feelings that uh, are basically that, that, that the Lytton Hitchens family are superior to other families. Yeah. 
that the um, that as a boy you shouldn't uh, uh, boys are better than girls in the sense that boys uh, should have more control of their emotions. Yeah, they should be, yeah. and women have a tendency to get a bit emotional, and then you need to be a bit condescending with them to get them. You know, that, 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 that's yeah, yeah. And the condescension yeah. there is like, oh well, they, you know, that's she just, just needs to go and yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's just it. period time or something. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know that that has been the general attitude yeah. um, as well. Mm. And on the um, and with your mother even she has as a result detuned from her feminine side quite significantly yep. and tried to be more like a male in a lot of ways in order to sort of live in that environment yeah. which she obviously grew up yeah in as far as, as taking as control well. of the businesses and the decision making process and all of that <coughs> she very much yeah. wanting to do that and then whenever you did exactly those things you received issues of, you, you received the projection or the emotion of approval yep and so so now so so now there's this established this process if you like that's inside of yourself going well if i if if i'm with a woman and she's crying then my role is to yeah there there everything's going to be all right Let make her feel it. safe yeah. and secure and be a bit condescending while you're at it but that's fine you didn't even see it as condescending it's just no. there 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 yeah. this is my role um you know help help you sort of Calm down a bit. You're just a bit overwhelmed and overwrought. You know, that's, that's fine. And, and out of control. Out of control. You know, that's all right. You know, that's but I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm in control. <laughs> but, and, and so there is this underlying feeling of that. And then there's the whole sort of Lytton Hitchens family thing. Which well, the is, whole name thing. I mean, it's like, yeah. And I mean, there's lots of stories around that because we think it's a bit of a con anyway, like when we <laughs> go back to it. But yeah. yeah. So, it is. The, so the name Lytton Hitchens, a hyphenated name in itself. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that, that going back through the generations, the generation that started that um, was just someone who basically was wanting to have the facade have of status. Of status. Yeah. 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 And so, and then that's come through. Yeah. From there. yeah, and one of the reasons why you wanted a large farming operation was also for status. Totally, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. so you can see there's a lot of addictions towards status yeah. inside of your family, and therefore obviously passed down to be inside of yourself. Now, the question I have for you though is that being the cause of these emotions that now exist inside of you, what's the effect in your relationship with Eloisa? Now, what I notice happening a lot is that you don't notice the effect. No. In other words, there's these presumptions that occur that that you think, you know, what, and this is probably what I need to say for the audience's sake is, is this is what happens regularly. We see this very common uh, as a common occurrence between, between couples. You were brought up in a family that had a certain set of principles and they viewed those principles as love. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Eloisa obviously grew up a family in a different family who had a, set, set, a different set of principles and they viewed those principles as love. And the problem is that each of you struggle to, find, to see your own, uh, your, the contradictions between your own principles of love and God's truth about love. Yeah, yeah well, we were that arrogant that we didn't think that we needed to even go there in the first place. Basically. Exactly. Like, it was right. You were right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how it is for many couples, yeah. they, and particularly in the West, where, where we grow up thinking our family's right and the, all the other families are less right. Yeah. right. They just don't get it. They just don't get it, right? Our family knows everything that's going on and everyone else doesn't get it. And, and this in itself is arrogance because, because obviously it's not equality. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not an equal way of seeing everything in the world but rather a feeling of superiority develops inside the child. And that's the purpose of it. The purpose of it uh, from an adult's perspective is to inculcate inside of the child, train the child to grow up believing that it's superior. In the worst cases, you, can you, if you remember the kings of England or the kings of another country, yeah. they grow up believing they're born to reign, being, yeah. believing they are better than everyone around them, believing that they are gods almost. Yeah. And that is the, uh, you know, that, that injury taken to its extreme, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, obviously, it's not to that extreme inside of yourselves, right? No, but there is parts of that. Yeah. But there is parts of that injury present. Now, this is, this is having a large impact on your relationship. Because there are times when you just act in a way that is unloving, that is not humble, but you don't even realise that you're no. not being loving or humble in that moment. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you proceed with the action, thinking that it's the right thing to do, 
not even understanding at this point that it is the wrong thing from God's perspective to do. We haven't even stopped to actually even question it. Correct. And you also override any, you because you believe you're right, if Eloise has a different opinion to you. She's you, automatically wrong. She's wrong and you don't tend to pause and hear or consider Just emotionally her input. Yeah. And the same occurs vice versa at times. It does. Right, where you believe you're automatically right, particularly when it comes to fear-based issues. Yeah. And 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 Pete's wrong. Yep. Because he doesn't get it. He he doesn't he feel the fear. He should, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he should he should get it. Yep. And and this is one of the things if you remember we discussed yesterday about both humility and yes. love in terms of um, each of you stop stopping this uh, love of your own opinion yeah. right and working your way into understanding or getting god's opinion as your primary goal yeah. and i feel this is what's not happening yeah, and particularly for yourself pete it doesn't happen where you're not sensitive to god's opinion yet yeah. now one of the reasons why you're not sensitive to god's opinion yet is to be sensitive to god's opinion you have to feel god's emotion and if you can't feel God's emotion, you, you can't feel his opinion. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So, so it's very, very difficult then. To, you, it's sort of like if there's no, if the center is God's opinion and that's what you're aiming to, but you can't feel it, what do you do? You've <laughs> <laughs> <A bit> lost. <laughs> and there's been no will to want to do anything differently to what I've Correct. been doing in the past. Well, well, each of us, whoever we are and, and whatever background we come from, generally we have an addiction to our own opinion. Yeah. Because... We've not got a relationship with God, and so there's no one else to rely upon but ourselves. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so we, we grow up believing that the only people we can rely on is ourselves, yeah. and, and, and therefore we can't trust what our wife's saying to us. Yeah. <laughs> right? If she's got a different opinion to what I've got, then she's obviously wrong. Right? Yeah. And, and that's why I like making decisions and that, because I've had the control and I can do what I want, and, and I've been fine if I make a mistake, because at least it's my mistake. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know how to fix most of your mistakes, so it's all yeah. fine, and away yeah. you go. Um, and in this case, what we're trying to encourage you to do is to find God's opinion yeah. about, you know, what, what is the right thing to do from God's perspective. Yeah. And that is where, like, this requires a large amount of personal humility and also desire. We remember yesterday, you know, I think it was question number four that we mm -hmm. discussed, or five, four yesterday, was, was the aspect of will yeah. and, and developing the will, the desire to know God's opinion is a large factor of, of this. So understanding that your personal opinions are really worth nothing mm -hmm. if they're not God's opinions yep. yeah. is, is a very important key understanding. And, and what I find is the majority of people really struggle with that understanding. Yeah. They, they, they are so bound in self-reliance that can, like God's reliance isn't even considered. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and this is what I see you doing, Peter that you're so bound in this self-reliance reliance. That, that you've been taught to have over many yeah. years now. And this sense of, you know, our family knows what to do. And, and, and this sense of, uh, and, and like you say, there, is, there are other emotions inside of you where you feel really bad about yourself. Yeah. But, but, but these particular emotions, when you're in a close relationship with your closest person, which is Eloisa, these are the ones that are going to come out the most because with the other ones is when you feel insignificant around other people. But most people, with, with Eloisa, you don't feel insignificant around her. So, mm. so it's going to be mostly the arrogant-based emotions that are going to come out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and this is one of the problems that, that, that you're facing in your relationship is, is this, this perception that if I disagree with Eloisa, then I must be right. Mm. right? Yeah. And that, that, is a, that is going to influence your relationship significantly unless you can give it up. Right? If I disagree with Mary, I'm not asking myself whether I'm right or, or she's right. I'm asking myself, what is God's opinion here? What, what's God's truth about the issue we're discussing? Right? That's my question. My opinion matters not at all, and, and Mary's matters just as much as mine. <laughs> Not at all, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's all about finding God's opinion on it's this. It's all about finding God's opinion on this matter because God's opinion is the truth of the matter. Right. And what I love about that is when you start practicing that in your relationship, you 
immediately go from being adversaries to actually having a common goal. You're working together. How do we find out what is God's truth about this issue and that can direct the way we move forward or, you know, what happens next or how we resolve this issue. Mm. Uh, Whereas when you're both holding on to your personal opinion, and we see this with a lot of couples, don't we? Mm. They become sparring partners almost Mm. of like trying to win around. And it's a terribly divisive Mm. thing to do with the person who you spend every day with. Because I think sometimes when we're arguing or into each other, it's not even about the subject we're even talking about. It's just because something else has happened. And then we suddenly think, oh, here we got a chance. Yeah, whereas when I hear you say that, I think Mm. that for you and I, babe, we could, if we, actually could stop ourselves and go, all right, let's try and find God's truth and even reflect on that. I think that that would help automatically. But we see we don't stop ourselves. We just continue. But but you've got to see that the reason why you're not stopping yourselves. Yeah. Because I think I'm yeah, because right. I, it's because we want to be right, or we want to win, and that's what you're talking about. We want to win that that point kind of thing. But also, mm. what Pete said is quite important <laughs> as well, where you said there's stuff that we've skipped over already, yeah. and then we're opportunistic about an an occasion that comes up, and you need to be more sensitive to find the truth of why mm-hmm. even the conflict is happening because as pete said it's often not even yeah. about the issue at hand it's, true. it's about some other emotions that you're already not being honest with each other yes. about or it themselves. can be about the issue at hand so. but but a deeper issue associated with it yes. for example um, and yesterday we gave the example of you know not picking up the milk you know yeah. Or, yeah. as an example and um, if that happens regularly obviously the person's not being heard or listened to yeah. and obviously not being valued yeah. so so obviously the issue is one of my worth is getting triggered now, yeah. right? And yeah. I don't want to feel bad about myself. So you not picking up the mill makes my worth feel triggered, makes me it's feel like I'm us. not worth anything. Yeah. And now that I feel like I'm not worth anything, I feel like, no, you should make me feel like <laughs> I'm worth something. <laughs> That's the whole reason why we're having a relationship is your role is to make me feel like I'm worth something. <laughs> But and you what, do love me. Remember you said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, we call, and we call that love. Yeah. It's not love. It's my addiction to have my worth yeah. fulfilled, you know, or, or upheld. Yeah. And, and this is where we've got to see what's going on. So what we'd like to do, what we'd like to do is just dissect a little bit uh, more about the arrogance issue and talk about the details of it, of how it comes out. Now, this is, this is the part generally that most people find challenging because they can't see themselves and their behaviour very easily. And so when we raise the issue, this is what your behaviour looks like, there's automatic judgement that goes along with that discussion. So what I'm saying now is that you want to not judge your behaviour because yep. we're not. Mm-hmm. We're just telling you what we observe in your behaviour. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the key for you in, in, in this discussion is to go, okay, there's people observing this behaviour. Number one, is their observations, are their observations accurate? Yep. Right, number one question. Secondly, if their observations are accurate, instead of me judging myself for doing these things, which I judge as bad, right? Yeah, and then I get into And then you go down in this yeah, great big <laughs> yeah. downward to spiral. To Whole heap of spirits come over you and tell you, yes, 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 you've got to make you feel bad and all this, all this crap that happens. You don't have to do all any of that. What you need to do instead is ask yourself, what causes me to do this particular thing? What belief inside of me would be out of harmony with God's truth on the matter that causes me to act in this way? You follow me? Yeah. So that's what we would like your focus to be. And in in this entire discussion, both of you, if we can focus you on that particular thing, focusing only on, not on the judgment of the actions, But rather, What's the, belief? the what is the cause of this particular behaviour? What what inside of me emotionally is, must be present, or do I feel is there? And most of the time, if we're honest with ourselves, we will be able to feel the actual feeling that causes us to go and say that particular thing or do that particular thing, right? And if we're really honest, we can feel that particular feeling instead. And and if we're humble, we will feel it without having to do taking that. the action. Yeah. Um, and and we need to get into that habit, personal yeah. habit, of actually going, okay, this is firstly the observance of my behaviour. Yeah. So, and after a while you get good at this doing it for this yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You observe your own behaviour, almost like you're an onlooker of your own behaviour. 
you observe your own behavior, you see that's out of harmony with love. And the only way to know is to be able to feel some of God's love to determine the difference, of course, and we, that's a different discussion in itself. But you at least can see, yes, this behavior wouldn't feel good on the other end. Like yep. you can at least analyze it from an ethical perspective. Yeah. So would you like this being done to you? Yeah. Whatever you're doing to somebody else, you can at least do that. So, so when somebody, when I start telling somebody truth, they say, would you like me to tell you all the truth about yourself? <laughs> like, I say, yes, I would, thank you very much. <laughs> like, so I wish I, there was someone to help me. <laughs> I don't see it too much as hurtful. But, um, so, so, you know, to me, telling, someone telling me the truth is exactly what I want. Right? Yeah. So that's why I do it with others. Um, it, you know, but, but if someone come along and belt me in the nose, uh, I would, I would, like I would never do that to somebody else and I certainly wouldn't like that done to myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'd never want to go and do it to somebody else. I'd see that as unethical. So, so what you need to do is ask yourself, even if you can't feel God's truth about the matter because you can't feel God's emotions yet, you can at least analyse the ethics of that particular yeah. situation that's being raised and ask yourself whether you would like that being done to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. or whatever clears, is being... clears a lot up. Then. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so let's look at... There's four or five points that we've raised that we want to raise about the issue of arrogance just and it's just evidence of it's ob observance if you like of the arrogance yep. and then we can discuss a bit of that you, and you're allowed to disagree with whatever you want to yep. disagree with here <laughs> and, um, and ask we're pretty about certain we're yeah. right but <laughs> before, before this for myself like the last the last week or so i've been thinking like as for homework it's like okay what times am i aware that i'm arrogant and there's sort of a bit of a trend of times where I feel like I'm arrogant and then yeah. I... Yeah, yeah. would you like to you? tell us? Yeah. Well, say with my work environment mm -hmm. and with the sheep side of it and that sort of thing, like we've done a lot of education and talking and lectures and there's been lots of times where the feeling in me has been a very arrogant feeling of righteousness or that, that I know best or that this yeah. is the only way or, you know, you're an idiot if you don't do it the way I'm sort of doing it. So in other words, you've established that you are right yep. um, through a whole series of experimentations and processes with your sheep farming. And so when you're presenting that to I somebody else... I haven't been humble to it. I've just... Yeah, you know, you've, like, you've just said, I'm right. And, and you should do it. And you should do it this way. <laughs> yeah. Rather than just presenting the truth or whatever it and, is. And, and looking back, it definitely <laughs> had a huge bearing on the outcome of how it's been received. Like... Long t as a long-term thing, like mm -hmm. short-term, it worked really well. But mm -hmm. as a long-term thing in the industry, it hasn't gone very hasn't well. Gone very well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think yeah. that's and 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 exaggerating or or not not giving the full truth to something like like may, trying to make it look, sound better than what it is. Good. Mm -hmm. So there's this yeah, addiction good. to a facade. Yeah, that is like you want to present something as if it's really, really, really good, but you know there's these little flaws, but you forget to mention those. Yeah, or or I haven't I've made out something that actually hasn't even happened yet, but I think it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. And actually, yeah. You know, yeah, like it's so you, assumptions. you're predictive that it, you're predicting it will happen, but you're yeah. kind of acting but, like it already has. And you're acting has. like it already has. And then sometimes, because we get a lot of universities coming through the property as well, and there's been times where I can go, okay, yeah, I'm really just being a bit of a smart ass here. Yeah. 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 And it's the same sort of thing of wanting to feel like, you know, I'm pretty cool or, yeah. You know, like, Okay, so so you're seeing already the rea the interaction between the arrogance oh, recently, position. By the way, uh, that's I'm okay. That's you. okay. But you can see the interaction with the arrogance and the feeling that you know you have uh, a certain amount of knowledge that other people do not have, and that makes you sort of feel arrogant in that moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I I don't feel arrogant on subjects that I don't know much about. It's generally on. I want to stop you on that. <laughs> well, yeah, so <laughs> feeling for myself. No, no. Mm. But they, oh. Like, I want to hear from Pete oh, first sorry. what sorry. he believes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, sorry. 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 Right. So for myself, like, yeah. when, when I've known stuff that I feel really good at, like, that's when I, I, I've noticed it in myself at yeah. becoming more prominent. So it's where you believe you have investigated and you do know the answer and... You have experience. Yeah, like other in subjects that I don't know very much about. Um, you don't say much at all. I generally, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't. And I agree with that. Um, but then there's the third level of subjects. Yep. And you know what they are? The other ones where you think you know a lot and you don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And sometimes where you think you, where you actually haven't had any experience, but you perceive that you know already yeah. how it should be. Or that be. you try to imply that you have. 
And the other thing too, I noticed like in, in that scenario too, mm-hmm. like often say with the spirit influence side in that, often I still even at the moment don't always know um, what's me and sometimes what what is spirit. So a lot of the time I do, but there's certain times and obviously in those moments that you're talking yeah. about, Mary, yeah. where... The you get thing, fed information. I'm getting often getting fed stuff and yeah. assuming that that's me yeah. often at the moment. Yeah. yeah. And I assuming agree. that what you're getting fed is accurate. Is actually yeah. true. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I'm just, giving well, it's mine, feeling. of course. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. So, okay. so what we'd like to do then is talk to you more about it in relationship to you, in your relationship though. Yeah. Um, because you, you've pulled out areas where you've noticed the arrogance outside of the relationship. Yeah. yeah. But what about inside of the relationship? Inside the relationship with Eloisa, um, I think the arrogance with that is is often times where I feel I can do something better than she can. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like, um, um, what else? Yeah, that's that's. I think it, yeah. it, there's a often you know. Or you've a, got more experience than she has on a certain issue. Yeah, and and also. Um, it's, you struggled a bit with this one, eh? Well, yeah. it's more of the condescending side of it, which sort of links into the arrogance, isn't it? Does, it? Yeah. So with Eloisa, there's lots of times where I've been really condescending to her or to the way she does something or yeah. without a lot of compassion. Yeah. yeah. One, uh, one other thing I'd like to ask about, and we, then we'll proceed with what we want to discuss, and that is the um, what, what I notice a lot in your relationship is that you, you're frequently projecting if you like, at Eloisa, that that she knows less than you do on specific subjects, even subjects that actually she knows more than you do about. Yeah. Um, but in particular, I would like to raise this issue with regard to love. What I notice happening a lot is, is that Eloisa, because she's worked through specific emotions over a, num- a number of years now, she does have a much deeper sensitivity to what God's truth is about certain matters. So even though she does not have what you would classify as the secular experience, the worldly experience yeah. on the particular matter you're discussing, she is feeling God's feelings more than you are about that same issue. Yeah. So, so what I see happening is you're valuing the secular or worldly opinion over God's truth about the same matter. Yeah, and it's interesting with that with Eloisa too, because like when she talks to someone else about it, like I so often value it fine. It's it's generally the this between when it's coming them. back at you. Yeah. yeah. So when, when she's challenging, something yeah, when she's challenging do. something in me that like yeah. if she's talking to someone else, I generally see that quite yeah. okay. It's yeah. just the stuff yeah. coming back at myself. Yeah, yeah. Although we have also noticed that when she challenges other people, you do not support her challenge of them yeah. when she is actually right with regard to God's love and truth. Yeah. So if I feel scared or. Yeah, well, yes. fear, that's to do with fear, yes. Yep. You, you, you're certainly often afraid and, and allow Eloisa to take, uh, the brunt. Yeah, take the brunt of another person's, um, of, of another person's wrongdoing, if you like. Yep. And that particularly came out a lot which, in the issue that I've talked to you before about your, your daughter Elo, uh, and Isabella, Isabella getting abused. Yep. Uh, where you didn't want to take the action and the action was left up to Eloisa and, and Eloisa took the brunt of all of the abuse from different people, about her. including some yeah. of the family members who yeah. should have actually been supporting her choices and decisions. Mm. And that's another area where she was more sensitive because she's felt through some of those emotions. Um, she was more sensitive to the matter and how important it was from God's perspective and, and the rest of the family wasn't and yet she was bearing the brunt of and not only was, the family, she was blamed judgment. by the rest of the family. Yeah, the she was bearing the brunt of the family's judgment as well as the brunt of the judgment of the parents of the of the person who abused Isabella. So, yeah. so, and there was no support given to her there. So this is a issue that, but that's an issue of fear more than of arrogance. Yeah. 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 So let's look at the different things with regard to arrogance that we've noticed. Um, and there's probably five points here, and Mary can maybe read each of them out yeah. for you. And we'll just, we'll just sort of highlight them briefly if we can. Yeah. And then um, we'll talk about them in a bit more detail. Yeah. Mm. So the first one is a really common one that we see with a lot of people actually, but it is quite an arrogant belief. And it's the belief that the person in the partnership, say, who receives the most feedback from us is the person with the most issues. 
So you've watched us over a number of years give Eloisa some direct feedback. And lots of it. And yeah. lots of it. Yeah. And there's a tendency in you to feel like, oh, yeah, you've got issues, honey. Like, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> but that you don't because you haven't received that feedback. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's really happening there? It's more her desire to want to know. Correct. What we feel from you is, uh, we've felt from you in the past, is less of a desire to know. Yeah. And so we felt less inclined yeah. to give you the feedback. Yeah, and Eloise yeah. has been stressed and wanting to know what's Correct. going on. Yeah. She has a much stronger desire to know, and that's why she received more feedback. And that's the only reason. It's yeah. not because you're better than her. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually because she's more open to hearing God's truth than you are. Yep. So, so that's one of the issues that it is an issue of arrogance there. If you yeah. see the issue yeah, of arrogance? Yeah, yeah. You're not seeing that your wife is very, very open to hearing God's truth. Yeah. And you're less open to hearing it. And as such, she is probably going to be more sensitive from, from God's perspective. She'll be hearing God better because she's already more open to receiving God's truth. She will hear God better than you will. Does that make sense? Yeah. And she'll have a natural sense, you know, when you start to do these worldly things together where you've had some maybe worldly experience, but she's more sensitive. This is what Jesus was referring to earlier. Um, she's had more experience with God's way. Mm -hmm. She has a whole different... She's saying, hey, Pete, I think we should approach this this way. And you're often saying, oh, no, come on. I know how to do this. I've yeah. done this before. Yeah. I've done this a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. She yeah. said, but a hundred times before, and has it really gone? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't say that, and that's one no, of the issues we have. We're going to raise that with you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in a minute. <laughs> okay, so, so that's the first one. That's the first one. This, this concept that, that if we give feedback to a person, it means they have more problems than you do, and it does not. Yeah. It actually usually means they have less problems than you do to be They're open to receiving yeah. feedback. To receiving feedback. Yeah. So they've gotten over that first hurdle. <laughs> that yeah. 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 So the second point re relates a lot to that, and that is it's about arrogance and kind of exploiting in Eloisa her tendency to question herself, because she is now acknowledging she's got issues, and, and taking the stance of whenever you raise something and she begins to question herself, almost resting on that and saying, yeah, you're right to question yourself. I am right. I am right. And, and I go, yep. And you agree. Yeah. And then the whole and then I think your arrogance the builds. Yeah. 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 yeah it's also good. very dangerous on a number of levels because um, like in our relationship, you know, I notice Mary questioning herself when actually the issue of love is that she should not be questioning herself because she's actually right. Yeah. And I, have I, I would say, babe, you shouldn't be questioning yourself here because if you look at this logically and from God's perspective, you'll see that this is the situation, this is the situation, and this is the situation, which all indicates that the other person is actually out of harmony with love at this point, not yourself. So why are you questioning yourself? So I actually do the opposite to what yeah. you do there. I should be encouraging her to say more. Well, not only encouraging her to say more, but actually seeing, okay, why are you questioning yourself when actually what I'm saying to you or what others are saying to you is actually out of harmony with love and what you're, you're actually saying in this situation is more in harmony with love than what we have? Mm -hmm. so, so it's okay to question yourself when yeah. you're out of harmony with love, but, but when it can be proven to you through logic that you're actually in harmony with love, then, then you shouldn't be questioning yourself. You follow me? And that's where I've got a, an addiction with Pete because you then do. I'm supporting yeah. his arrogance you by are. not doing that. And, there's a and you're questioning yeah. uh, things about yourself that are in harmony with love, in, yes. you know, in, uh, not in disharmony, but in, inside of harmony with love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at times you're questioning those things because Peter wants you to believe they're out of harmony with love. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But actually you, are, you have more of a correct viewpoint of love than he does at this point about that particular thing right and then you allow that to occur yes because you you're in this addiction of that's one of the ways you got approval and one way one way you mitigated the anger and rage of men in fact yeah. in your pro I and then oh, i'm going to get grumpy and cranky and correct and head and off she wants, to avoid, she, she, she wants want to avoid that yeah. 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 yeah she wants to avoid that so so this uh, this sort of aspect of arrogance is one of what would you say it's sort of like a it's an area where you notice she's questioning herself and you see it as an opportunity to basically say that you're better than she is. Do you see what I'm saying? That you know better than she did and she should be questioning herself. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, when I see Mary questioning herself, I don't see it as an opportunity to compete with her. And in fact, quite often I'll look at what she's saying and I'll say, darling, I don't agree with what you're saying here, you know. Like sometimes Mary will say things like, I'm to blame for your sadness or something. And I go, no, I can't agree with that. You're not to blame for my sadness. No matter what you're doing, you're not to blame for my sadness. My sadness is my sadness. You, you should not be taking blame for my sadness. You know, God's way is I'm responsible for my sadness. I need to feel my sadness. My sadness was there before I met you. You're not to blame for it. Right? No matter what you've done, you might have even cheated on me. You're still not to blame for my sadness. Yeah. Right? And I wanted to say <coughs> it's all your fault. And yeah, when Eloisa says, you know, oh, I'm and to she's blame like, for yeah, sadness. yeah, it is all my fault because yeah. of all this stuff. And, oh, I go, you know, yeah. and you go, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Which is completely the opposite thing I do. Right. And that's perhaps a better way of saying it rather than questioning ourselves, because I do question myself. I never want to give that up. But when I go into self-blame and yeah. self-attack and take on responsibility for things that are not my fault, yeah. um, then I'm in an addiction myself. And if Pete, you are exploiting, and a lot of partners yeah. do this to yeah. each other, they exploit the injury in the other one. It's almost like from a soul perspective, you know she's going, she's prone to blame herself. For things, if so if you can convince her, she is to blame. Then you don't have to feel anything, yeah. and you don't have to challenge any emotion inside of yourself. Anyway, so it's like this is yeah. yeah. And the irony is, now, it, oh, sorry, if it's outsiders, oh. Pete might say, "Oh, you're not to blame for that." But if it's with us, he'll Correct. be like, it's a personal, you it's are, a personal issue yeah. between yeah. the two of you that happens frequently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that we've observed in your company. Yeah, yeah. cool. And um, we we feel quite strongly that, that this is a, it's a fissure, it, break, it yeah, breaks it your relationship because mm. what, uh, there's two things going on. One is that Eloisa, you have this you know, addiction, as we said, yeah. to attack yourself or blame yourself rather than just look at yourself, Correct. Which, is, which is different. Yes. Looking at yourself, you can be honest with yourself without attacking and blaming and pulling yourself down, right? Yep. So you have that addiction. When Peter notices that particular addiction in play, yeah. he then feels it's a great way of manipulating you yeah. into feeling that he is superior and he doesn't have to listen to you now. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it actually feeds his addiction to feel superior rather than actually confronting it. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so whereas with myself, Pete, if it was me in your situation, what I do instead of that is I go... I go, no, darling, you can't be blaming yourself for things that are my feelings. They're my feelings. They're inside of me, and they were inside of me before I met you. Mm. Right? So you know your feelings with, with women in particular. Yeah. They were all well established Everything was all before you met Eloisa. You met what age? What age um, were you when you met? Well, not the first time, but yeah, yeah. when you got 20s, married. 25 when we first mm. met. Yeah. And so you were 28. So, yeah. So, so you had 25 yeah, years yeah. of... Yeah some other women yeah. and mostly your mother of course because yeah. you still live in the same property with her yeah. um, <clears throat> who have determined this kind of behavior is acceptable to you with in your relationship with women and and i've inculcated this kind of behavior with you and all of your pain and suffering associated with women really does revolve around your mother mm -hmm. uh, mostly yeah. and and while this is certainly an attraction of a of a relationship that's attracting god it's god's help, help helping you mm -hmm. to, to heal. actually heal this particular injury. Yeah. Um, the reality is that the sadness that exists inside of you from a sexual perspective and an emotional perspective with regard to women existed before you met her. Yeah. And therefore you can't blame her for it. Mm -hmm. And you also then can't manipulate it. Yep. And if you attempt to blame or manipulate her with it, you're way out of harmony with God's mm -hmm. views of humility and also out of harmony with truth. And I don't change in the process either. Of no. course. It gets worse for me too. And your relationship degrades and everything else that occurs. Yeah. When you're out of harmony with humility and truth and love, that's what happens. Yeah. It's a natural occurrence. If you're going to get out of harmony with humility, truth and love, you will automatically cause a fissure in your relationship. It will automatically degrade. There's no other outcome. Yeah. And so even though in the moment you both might have got an addiction met, as in you avoided conflict and you got to not confront an emotion. Yeah. At the end of the day or the week or the month or the year, feel you feel either. kind of really blur no. with each yeah. other because from a soul perspective, it, there's yeah. all this stuff going on that you don't want to notice and it's actually pulling you apart. And we're oblivious yeah, to why we're not feeling good about being with each other when yes. yeah. this is all yeah. the stuff going yeah. on. And there is uh, this tendency in your relationship to blame each other for certain things. And Pete, 
you know, there is a lot more blame coming from you towards Eloisa than from yeah. Eloisa coming towards you. But Eloisa knows that she, in certain areas, particularly with the sexual area, yes. there is certainly a lot coming out, a lot of, coming out of you as well, right, yeah. towards the male. That and that, that causes you to do a similar thing. So that's the second issue. The second issue related to arrogance is this issue of um, not accepting God's truth on the matter. Not even seeking it. Not even are. seeking yeah. it. And, and not seeing that, and actually instead manipulating the injury of your partner so that you can feel superior to your partner, yeah. right? Which is actually, which is only ever going to cause your partner feel resentful, but also for yourself, it'll cause, the, uh, you know, obviously a stepping away of the relationship as soon as that happens. And it's pretty hard to feel turned on by your guy if you feel deep down that it's he awful. actually thinks he's better than you and you're not much good, you know? Yeah. 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 Now, I'm not suggesting many women have the feeling that they need to be thought of as better than the guy, right? And I'm not suggesting this either. You don't need to make Eloisa feel like she's the queen of no, your household. No, we need an well, equal the, relationship. Then it would be the, the in reverse, exactly yeah, correct. what It would be yeah. just the same thing yeah. in reverse then, yeah. and, uh, and that doesn't cause right. any good things either. So, yeah. so we're not suggesting the opposite. We're suggesting instead that both of you need to see that from God's perspective, equality between the two of you is the thing. And there are times, Pete, where you need to also see that because Eloisa has processed things emotionally, even though she might not have the secular worldly experience that you have on certain matters, she certainly does have a closer con con connection with God's opinion on the matter. And that is something to be valued and listened to. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I'm not suggesting you need to listen to her when she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm suggesting, that, you know, like what I do with Mary, if Mary tells me a whole heap of things that are not God's opinion, I go, darling, <laughs> sorry. But. But I think that's where we sort of get set up sometimes too, because yeah. we, we, we're not working out. Well, you said that, Pete said the other day to me, he said, um, I'm, about, I'm asking you questions on things that... Um, I shouldn't ask you questions on, like that I might know nothing about or have, like, oh, I don't know how to do it. And he wants my opinion on those. But on the things that I probably could give an opinion on, he doesn't actually value or even ask yeah. my opinion. And, and he doesn't that, even that's want already to. arrogance in play. You're yeah. only asking where you know that she, her opinion is worth less than you. Yeah, well, it's nearly and like, then he gets I'm angry at me for like not proving like the, being my theory. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. So it's yeah. all yeah. part yeah. of that same injury. Yeah. Yeah. And we see the sort of the fissure that occurs in your relationship when it happens. It does. And, and Eloisa steps away from you sexually as well when it happens, yeah. which then compounds the sexual issue for yourself. <laughs> and then you feel like, oh, well, she's not even sexually interested in me. And I mean, that's another one of your addictions. So you need the woman. <laughs> just, <laughs> and it just goes around and it escalates, escalates and it's gets like, away. And then we're out. like, oh, we're a basket case. It's too much. Yeah, it's too yeah. hard. Yeah. 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 When, uh, when you're well, not, it's a tragedy because it's like... It I is say, a tragedy because yeah. you do love each other. And, and, and you know what's going to be really really awesome you're going to find if you go away and experiment with what we've spoken about even if you start working on one of the issues you will feel a difference immediately mm. in lots of different areas that's the cool thing about a partner relationship there's so many things yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that are interconnected so if you deal with some sincerely you will find the benefits and it makes it easier to deal with the rest because mm. yeah. you know what it's like when everything's going bad and there's no good <laughs> part and you just think oh where do we even start and it's all just unhappiness it's like it? i shouldn't have got up to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It all went, all went, i would have been safer just all went to hell in the handbag <laughs> from that moment two separate handbags yeah. 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 let's start again a, but can you see the focus of this uh, little discussion really is um get God's opinion. Both yeah. of you focus on God's opinion. Both of you always ask the question, what is God's opinion? Yeah. If you don't know what God's opinion is, ask yourself, what is the ethical yes. thing to do here? Yeah. What, because whatever is ethical is probably closer to God's opinion. Because that's where, for both of us, we can generally come to that answer pretty good, I think. Yeah. yeah. You're both yeah. intelligent. You're yeah. both well-educated. It's not like you have, you've both yeah. got... Like as a little kid, I even knew. I knew what was not okay to do and what's yeah. okay to do. And really, that's the same thing. It's yeah. like, yeah. 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 So, so, you know, if you're going to break this cycle you, you've been in, it's going to be essential that you 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 consider ethics and you consider God's, God's opinion. opinion. And and there are times when both of you are not going to feel God's opinion because you're not at one with God yet. So yeah, you're I both agree. not going to feel God's opinion. But you'll certainly be able to logically examine the ethical opinion. 
And we're not going to blame each other, which, or I'm not going to blame her. Well, that's right. If you, yeah. start, if you start seeing yourself even like what, what we do is we discuss things. What is God's opinion? What do you think God's opinion is? What do I think? Why isn't this God's opinion? You know, we even we, we have discussions about things in such a way to, to obtain God's opinion. Now, it's rare because when you, the more connected with God you are, the more rapidly you know God's opinion. That's obviously mm-hmm. a truth. So, so once you become at one with God, you will instantly know God's opinion all the time about any issue that comes up, and you'll know straight away what's right and what's wrong. It's so, so much easier. Your life's so much easier. <laughs> but, but before then, while you've got injuries, you need to at least ask yourself, if you can't feel God's opinion, and most people can't, then ask yourself, what is the ethical thing here? Yeah. So is it ethical to exploit the injury of another person? Obviously not, because you wouldn't want somebody else to exploit yours. It's like someone knowing you're sad, and so they manipulate your sadness. Twisting you and making it worse. Yeah, you wouldn't like that. You, you wouldn't like your girl having sex with you after she's manipulated your sadness. So, so why do you expect her to have sex with you after you've manipulated her shame. sense of worth or shame? Yeah. Yeah. You, wouldn't. You, you can see that there must be an issue there. So I want to focus you on that, that if you can't feel God's feelings then at least analyse the ethical dilemma that's in front of you and cooperate together to find that solution. Yes. So instead of warring with each other to find the solution, yeah. you never find solutions that way. Yeah, uh, it's two people are acting <laughs> We've proven that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you two people are acting in complete disharmony with each other, right? Yep. So, so you need to cooperate together to find the ethical solution at least. Yeah. If you can't find God's opinion, then at least find the ethical solution. Yeah. And then ask yourself the third question, which is, what emotion within me prevents me from accepting this ethical solution as a way of life? What emotions in me make me feel like, no, that's not right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in your case, Pete, with this issue of arrogance, it's the emotions of being taught from a young boy that the Lytton Hitchens family is superior. Right? being taught from a young boy that, that rewards should come because you know things yep. secularly, not, not from God's perspective, but secularly, right? from a worldly perspective, being taught that because you know these things, it means you're worth something. So your worth is yeah. attached mm. to you knowing things. Right? So that's why it's hard to give up. Yeah, because if I'm no longer arrogant, then I'm not going to feel like I've got any work. Correct. Yeah. So that's very difficult. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Pete, also, also, I feel that a lot of times when you guys have personal issues where you want something emotionally, basically, from Elo, yeah. you're not seeking God's truth about that matter because if God's truth about that matter is you're not entitled to get that thing from her, you're going to be faced with feeling something and this yeah. brink comes back to your fear of feeling emotions. Mm. And so it is going to feel challenging when you start working through this because you're going to confront that fear, which will be good because yeah. that you can have the opportunity to start working through it then when mm. you cease the addiction. It sort of makes sense too that it's come to a head sort of now because for both of us, it's like, you know, I've had the property as my distraction for mm-hmm. the, and that's no longer a distraction. We're hanging out with each other more, more. and yeah. then it's like, oh. This is why most oh, oh, Jesus. don't, don't <laughs> hang out. Is <laughs> <laughs> um, what an excuse can I go I back to the paddy? Oh, fuck it, I don't have any. Like, oh, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> going to have to sit here and work through the issues now. <laughs> yeah, the, the majority of couples have a large amount of their life away from each other. And during the week, the majority of couples probably see each other at, on, on a really, what I would classify as a true soul-to-soul interaction for very few minutes of every day. And, and there's usually good reasons why that occurs yeah. <laughs> yeah. because they've arranged their life that way. Yeah. It brings up all this stuff that we've been avoiding. Yeah. Got and in fact, it's generally recommended by marriage counsellors and others that if you both work in the same business or the same, you know, that you actually need time apart. You know, yeah. there's this whole concept of you need time apart, yeah. like space. So space. And a lot of it is just avoidance of the, of the confrontation of, uh, of different addictions yeah. that happens when you're together. We're not suggesting that you don't need time apart, but that time apart should be time that you spend with God and working through yourself 
uh, but but not because you're in avoidance of your partner, mm-hmm. not because you're trying to get away from them. <laughs> no. And it's kind sense. of hard now because it's like both, both them like we love this idea of being <clears> together. <throat> we're like, yeah, we want to be, and we're going to do this, and then we do it, and we're like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> really this is like, man, and there's this, there's this, and it's like, I don't even know if I want to do that. <laughs> then we have a fight, and then we're like, <sighs> yeah, 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 isn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right. So there are a few issues. Let's keep going with that issue. Um, So the third one. Yep. The third one is about the issue of seeking truth, really, and that very often you're not seeking personal truth about yourself. So you're not asking Eloisa. You very rarely would ask uh, Jesus or myself for personal feedback. And as a general rule, in your general life, you're pretty close to personal emotional feedback towards yourself and that I mean that's an extension of your arrogance and it helps it means your arrogance is very rarely challenged so I'll keep my little safe space Mm -hmm. it actually also indicates a lot of fear Pete that you're covering over with a facade of arrogance so it's it's a way of avoiding um, the fact that you don't know certain things and you really don't know how to resolve them and also you don't know what the underlying emotional reason why or reason is that you feel certain things and as a result of that, you tend to put a facade of arrogance on it by stepping back, not involving, not, not asking for truth, not wanting to know. And ignorance is not a solution to problems. And, but you are sort of treating it like it is. Yeah. Does that make sense? And a lot of people do. Yeah. But it doesn't ever work in the long term, <coughs> yeah. Yeah. as you're finding. Yeah, I, I, there's, I think it's, I just want my safe little spot over here in the corner in my own little universe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, partly it's occurred through your childhood whenever you've been sort of either, you know, browbeaten by your brothers or, you know, when you're at boarding school and things like that. You've learnt to sort of stay away, uh, to not, it's sort of almost like the view you have is that there is no problem as long as I don't know about it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I used to think some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there could be a million problems that you don't know about, but you're okay. Yeah, I could sleep that night. <laughs> yeah. But as soon as you know about one of them, it bothers you like nobody's business, right? Yeah. And this is this is one reason why people choose ignorance is because once they know the truth, there is a tendency for them to worry a lot about the truth. Then, yeah. which is a, with it, which is a fear-based emotion about yeah. truth, and that happens a lot for me now. Mm. Yeah, like yeah. I'll I'll stay up half the night thinking about stuff. Thinking which, about all this. Before it's like, man, I used to just sleep the whole way through the night. And yeah. I'd yeah, wake up the next morning. And now it's but one of the reasons why you sleep all the way through the night is because you 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 were working 10, 12 hour days anyway, and yeah. of course you come home tired and yeah. exhausted, yeah. and of course you're going to sleep all the night. Now that you're being more loving to yourself. You, you've you've now going to be more confronted with certain emotions, and particularly the emotion of fear, and you're using arrogance to cover over your emotion of fear. Yeah. And and it it this not asking for truth is a way of preventing your fear. Yeah, I'm wanting to protect my fear at all costs. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this is because this is what you were saying to um, before is because if he knows. Then there's that the panic, and he, then the fear is confronted, and he doesn't want that fear. He doesn't want that feeling. Or yeah. he's got to feel it, Correct. and he doesn't really want to do either. He of doesn't those. want to feel that feeling. Yes, okay. the feeling of agitation yeah. distresses oh, you, uncomfort, yeah. and, and it causes you much discomfort. So yeah. you don't want to feel that feeling. Yeah. So what you do instead is you cover over it by not knowing things. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, and not, not, not going, not even seeking, wanting not to being know a seeker at all. Yeah, yeah, not being a seeker of truth, not wanting to even know. Yeah. Is, is a part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting because there's lots of parts of my life where I love being a seeker and just with this emotional one. I agree. Yeah. That's so, what we observe. Yeah. Yeah. So if I put the same amount of energy into my emotional <laughs> seeking as exactly. these other things. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what we observe. You, you are well, uh, you are easily able to seek truth in other aspects of your life where your personal emotions are not, yeah, yeah, where they're not challenged. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And if you think, Pete, about your childhood, you shared with us about how terrifying your childhood was because you could see spirits so real and they were everywhere. And how you managed that terror as you grew older was through certain gurus and just More shutting protection. down, just denial of the yeah. truth that they were there Total really, avoidance. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It was like, basically, I just had to put a wall up or otherwise I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. Mm. Yeah. 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 
So this is your, your this what is you've what you called do with your, your, life. your yeah. technique to mm. deal with fear. Anytime there's fear, mm. put the wall up, pretend it's not yeah. there, and then I can... Yeah, because I've had times with Eloisa where, like, um, say, times where I thought I've been supporting her in the past, and it's like I, I go into my sort of military mode where it's like, <laughs> like <laughs> okay, you know, bring it on, I'm ready now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and, and the feeling for Eloisa is I'm not there at all. Yeah. But, but I was there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I'm getting things done now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, well, you just, you, there was no emotional support. <laughs> but I'm saying, but, but, hun, like, the feeling in me was at the time. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. have that feeling sometimes at the moment. Like, I know, I recognise that. It's like, I'm ready, God. Nothing happens. <laughs> and then it's like, ah, oh, all right, whatever. Obviously, I'm not. And then suddenly it's like, Pow! I'm like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's, it's creating a false sense of safety in order to deal with something. That's what you're really doing. Yeah. And, and the reality is, from a soul perspective, that fear is only dealt with when you do feel unsafe. So, so creating a sense of safety in order to deal with something you're afraid of is, is something that is not actually possible to do from a soul perspective. Yeah, I'm avoiding that unsafe feeling at all costs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jesus said something really powerful to me about fear a while back and he said, no, dealing with fear is going through the feeling that it's not going to be okay. <laughs> you can't feel like, oh, it's okay, I'm just going to feel fear. You go it's through the like feeling, that. it's if not, not going to be okay. okay. No. It's not okay. It's never Everything okay. feels wrong. It's, Everything it's, feels like it's, it's going to be world. very bad. Yeah. End yeah. of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you, unless you process that emotion, it will remain in you yeah. as an unfelt an un- unexpressed emotion. Yeah, no, I can really relate. To guiding that. everything yeah. you do. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. yeah. So one one of the techniques. This is one of the techniques you use. Not knowing the truth in order <clears throat> to not feel distressed, and that comes across to other people then as arrogance. Mm. Yeah. yeah that I'm you not feel interested like interested in don't. listening to anything they've got to say. And not only that, not interested in knowing what the truth is. Because and then there's a temptation on other people's behalf to believe that that's because you already think you know it. Mm-hmm. When reality is you don't. No. You'd just like to not know it because it's a way of managing fear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's look okay. at four. Four. This one you actually brought up yourself in our intro, Pete, and it's about not valuing love or truth in your interactions with other people. And so remember, you were telling us about the presentations you you gave, and you didn't really necessarily value the absolute truth when you're talking to others you wanted to give a certain impression yeah i wanted to brighten it and yeah. make it yeah. yeah make it all optimistic rather than yeah. accurate yeah. and certainly not pessimistic yeah yeah, yeah. 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 never yeah. skew on the side yeah. of pessimism yeah you're wanting people to go away feeling yeah. all good and feeling inspired yeah. and all that stuff yeah. but yeah. you've you've made a bit of a story up yeah. rather than yeah, yeah. and and <laughs> how this relates to love is that often you will desire to have your addictions met at this, at the expense of loving, say Eloisa, mm. and the expense of truth. Yes. Can you expand on that a bit? Well, if you think about it, going back to the example where you're talking to a group of people yeah. and um, you're telling them a story that's not completely accurate. You know, there's missing bits or there's bits of you know. Yeah, I'm making out exaggerations or whatever. Yeah. And can you see that in that place you're doing it so that you can get a feeling from your audience? Yeah. So, what's the feeling you want from your audience? Yeah, it's a feeling of, um, of, I think it goes back to that worth feeling, feeling of what? Correct, yeah. A, a feeling Makes you of, feel good. Yeah, Makes you feel yeah that, that what I'm doing is okay. And, you, you and know, it it's does, a confirmation of that, that. And a confirmation of your own superiority in a way, like yeah. that you're good, that you're a good guy and yep. you know yeah. that you know what you're doing and you, you're, better at them than, you're better than them at this particular thing. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah, totally. That's the addiction. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're wanting that addiction fed and you're compromising telling the truth. Yeah, Does that make sense? Totally. To get that addiction fed. Yeah, I want addiction more than the truth. Correct. Yeah. That's what I mean by that. And you do this in your relationship where you want the addiction rather than facing the truth. Ex- example. Yeah. Um, Eloise is not having sex with you. Yep. Right? That's a big feeling inside of you, feeling like you're not loved by the woman. Yep. Right? The addiction inside of you is I want to feel loved by the woman because when I feel loved by the woman, 
this big sadness. I feel I, okay and I can manage other yeah. things. Yeah. If, as and long this as big I have sadness, that. I don't have to feel this big yeah. sadness, right? Yeah. yeah. And this big sadness is causing all these problems in my life, and I just want to. Yeah. Yeah. And and your answer to that is to have the woman have sex with you, then the sadness goes away, or, or you think it's gone away, but obviously it's still within you, yeah. right? Now, this is what I'm saying. You're compromising the truth here and compromising love here Compromise by everything. getting your addiction fed. The truth is that her having sex with you shouldn't be for the purpose of making you feel good about yourself. Yep. Right? You believe it should be. At the moment. At the moment. Yep. But it shouldn't be. The only reason why somebody should have sex with another person is because they really want to pleasure the other person. They really want to, you know, give a gift of their love and their pleasure uh, and pleasure to the other person. That's the reason why they want to do it. Not for any other reason, not to cheer them up, not to make them feel good about themselves, but just because they want to pleasure the person and give the gift of their love to the person. That's the only purpose for engaging in sex, really. Yeah. Now, if Eloise are engaged in sex in that regard, you just treat it like an expectation that you receive it. Because these addiction, every time we have an addiction, we have expectation associated with the addiction. So if the expectation is, the woman has to have sex with me in order to validate my sense of worth as a man and make me feel good about myself sexually. So if that's my reason for her having sex with me, then basically I'm already expecting her to have sex with me. So I'm not seeing her having sex with me as a gift I'm of love as, yeah. I'm, or a gift of her desire to pleasure me. Mm. I'm seeing it as something that I should be able to demand. Yep. Uh, and I'm entitled and to it. And entitled to it. Yeah. It's We're married, wife. for goodness sake. Yeah. She's my wife. I'm <laughs> She's the husband. Wife. What's the point of getting married if you can't do that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and that's where the, the imbalance comes. And so what the comment that Mary made, if you read it again. Uh, about the, not the co this one. Yes. That you're willing to forego love in order to attempt to have your addictions met. Yeah. So that's what she means by that. Yeah. Does that, that make sense? sense? Yeah. yeah. And this, and when, when you do that, you're skipping over quite a lot of things internally. Right? So, if, so for example, if Mary doesn't want to have sex with me, right, I don't even suggest to her that she should. But, but also, if she doesn't want to have sex with me and I feel bad about it, I don't, I, I feel about it. I don't yeah. go and say, I don't shame her or make her feel bad about it or tell her that she hasn't dealt with this and hasn't dealt with that and she's obviously got these sexual issues that she needs to go. <laughs> you know, I don't dump on her all of the stuff that I observe in her. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I'm feeling some sadness here that she doesn't want me and we haven't had sex for a month or whatever or, or six months sometimes. And if I feel any sadness about it, it's my sadness. I need to work through why I still have this addiction, yeah. right? which is an expectation. It's not acknowledging the gift of her desire, but rather it's wanting her desire in order to validate something in myself. So you need to address that. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We'll talk more about sexual issues. <clears throat> because the reason why we raise this is yeah. because it does have a big impact on your sexual openness towards Peter. Yeah, because Eloise is going to so, remain shut. Or it's not, there's no... Um... Well, she's got, a, she's got a role when it comes to sex. Yeah. And the role is to please the man to make him feel good about himself. But what is she, like, it's not about you acknowledging the gift of her body or the gift of her, her desire or the gift of her love for you. It's not about acknowledging any of those things because you already expect all those things. Yeah, well, I you find see. this bit hard, <coughs> maybe because I already have so many injuries sexually of my own. Honestly, Eloisa, you're totally willing to do this. You Correct. Are t you're totally willing... And less willing lately because of anger reasons, which we'll yeah. raise later. Yeah. And, and maybe it won't be in this discussion because it'd be a quite a long discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. But, but um, you know, you're totally willing to enter yes. this bargain. It's a bartering Correct. system. Yes, because I get out away from other stuff. Well, yeah, you get to have... And the, you, well, the man, man doesn't feel angry with you anymore. Correct. So you get that. Yeah. You get, you get a feeling of safety now. Yeah. And I also believe this. Don't I? Like, don't I always, I, I feel like the, the that is what role. sex is. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. You do believe it. You don't have a value of your personal pleasure sexually. No. It's no. not like a, and, a and to be gift honest, for yourself. Uh, sorry. No. Well, yeah, the large majority have, of women on the planet don't have yeah. for the same reason. Yeah. See, historically, men have treated women as possessions. Yeah. Right. And there is still that very strong attitude in most men today. If you look particularly in the third world, 
is yeah. very prevalent, but we also but see it then. in the Western world, very prevalent where many men still believe that they, you know, a woman's role, a woman's is. role is to, you know, have the babies, you know, do lovely meals and have sex with them. Yeah. And while tell the woman's doing that, are. yeah, and tell them how great they are. And while the woman's doing all that, she's a great wife. And if she doesn't do any of that or one of those things, then she's terrible. Yeah. And and, uh, and you go and find someone else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That that many men feel that way. Right? Yeah. And and the reality is many women feel very angry and resentful about that. But yeah. they do sort of have the feeling that they're not a good woman unless they do it. But then Agreed. they feel angry as a backlash towards that yes. emotion. So that they do it. They yeah. sacrifice themselves in doing it. They have a career and try and do all those things. And then they get angry that they've done it. Yep. And then they take out that anger and rage on the men. Yeah. Right. And then we get all sorts of problems start. You get you get frigidity in the woman yeah. developing where she doesn't want to have sex with her at all. You get in the man, the anger stuff comes at the man. So he's now feeling like impotent. So you get yeah. impotence and... And, and it, then, then he's really angry with her. So he just says, "I'm going to take my sex however I can get it." So then he has <laughs> premature ejaculation issues, and you know, yeah. there are all sorts of issues occur in the sexual relationship as a result of these building emotional conditions. Yep. So we've got that. Yeah. So, so what? What the reason why we raise some of these issues is because we would like to help you just undo some of that yeah. and get back to, mm. you know, get back to resolving those. So we have one more issue one more with this Pete. area of arrogance. <clears throat> yep. So, and this is actually really crucial, Pete. Yeah. And it's about um, you're actually setting up a dynamic where you, instead of valuing the femininity and uniqueness of the other half of you in Eloisa, you're actually setting up a dynamic where she has to compete with you in having qualities that you value, which are... Which are masculine qualities. Sort of... Okay, yeah, yeah, as far as, um, you know, as far as taking action and things like that, as far as, like, the way... Well, let's put ...decision it, making and stuff, or... Well, no, a, a woman who's connected to herself will be able to make decisions, and a woman who's connected to herself will take action. Yeah. It's not so much that. It's more... It's more how she does these things. It's more issues like intuition, emotion. Yeah. You don't value sensitivity, intuition, and emotion, right? Yeah. You've taught yourself to detune from it. Yep. You've and taught, your family injury is? And your family injury is, is be logical, weak. don't do those other things that are weakness, yep. right? Now, this means that now many of these things are feminine qualities. Intuition, desire, you know, a woman generally has a stronger connection with emotion than a yeah. man normally. Uh, a man generally is more logical than a woman. You, you want Eloisa to be more like a man than a woman. Mm. Now, if you look at the relation, you, your mum and dad, yeah. your mum has also tried to become more like a man than a woman. Totally, absolutely. You can yeah. see that, yeah. right? Yep. For the same reasons, actually. Yep. Right? And it's because there is this underlying feeling around her in the men that unless she's more like a man than a woman, she's not going to be respected, she's not going to be valued, she's not going to have any worth. And so so what's her choice? Her choice is either that she bees the woman and has no respect from men, no value, no worth, or she earns this worth, value and respect, by becoming more like a man. Yeah. Right? So you're actually turning your wife into a man. Yeah. <laughs> and then do you think you're going to want to have sex with her afterwards? Like, probably not, right? <laughs> You might as well have a homosexual relationship if you're going to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the irony with that is is that most homosexuals are more connected with you know, like emotions, intuition, and emotion, and so you'd have trouble with that probably too. <laughs> but, but sorry, sorry, go. Oh, no, I was going to say it is where you run in, you run yourself into trouble because yeah. on one hand you want Eloisa not to have these qualities of sensitivity and being emotional and soft and things like that. And you look down upon those You qualities. look down on them. But on the other hand, you would actually like her yeah, to I be do. soft and vulnerable in so, bed yeah. <laughs> sexually. Yeah. And so you kind of, it's, it's a big mixed message and a lot of projection going on her where she, she doesn't know how to get your approval, which she does have an addiction to getting. Yeah. And she wants to desperately avoid your displeasure. Yeah. And, and she doesn't, from a soul perspective, she's like, what, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to be? And, and you she's know what disconnecting from herself. Well, what happens before the disconnection is 
the person tries one thing, that didn't work. They try another thing that's almost the opposite, that doesn't work. They try another thing, oh, that one worked, but that was confusing, but it didn't work last time. I go yeah. <laughs> and then they try the other thing, and that didn't work, and they try this back and forth, back and forth, and eventually they get to the point where, I'm not going to try anything at all. Yeah. Um, Which I'm, I'm, I've had it now. Yeah. Oh, I'm tired of trying anything. That's where they get at the end, where they just get resentful and just go, no, that's it now. I'm not trying anything now. Nothing works anyway, so what's the point? So the feeling of hopelessness creeps in the recipient of this kind of treatment to such an extent that they basically become a person, if, they, if they're not self-reflective, they become a person who basically refuses to do almost anything. And that's where you're headed if you're not careful. Right? So, so it's very important to arrest that because, it, because, because it, you, you want to value the emotion, intuition and femininity of your wife. You want to value it. You don't have those qualities. And by the way, for, you, know, you might gain some intuition, but you're never probably going to have it as good as your wife because it's a, it's a, it is a more feminine than a masculine quality. She's probably never going to be as logical as you because that, because that is a more masculine quality. Do, do you follow me? Yeah. This is where you, how you come together is you value each other's qualities that are not uh, that, that are that are the opposite or not. Like well, not yourself. opposites, but they're they're, I call them. I feel they're that complimentary. Yeah, they're complimentary. You you what you realise after a time is that you need that in that person because you because that the other half of you contains that feeling that you probably have to going to have to develop, but you're going to have to develop by feeling how they do it first. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, so Mary will develop logic just like I will develop intuition, right? But obviously the closer we get to God, the more that will occur. But, but if, if I can feel from her what it feels like, then it's going to be a lot easier for me to do it. And if she can feel from me and value you know, the logic, then she'll be able to feel what that feels like. And we both grow as a result. Does that make sense? Not only together, but also towards God. What you're doing is... You're saying, get rid of the bits and piece, pieces sorry, that I don't value and then let's go and be at one with God. <laughs> and happy. And happy. And, and you're not going to be because, because unless you value these particular qualities and, and feminine traits, it's going to be impossible for you to become at one with God, even with or without her, but, but certainly with her, impossible. And it's also impossible to maintain a loving relationship while you're not valuing something that is an intrinsic part of the feminine nature. Do you follow? So it's impossible. So, so a big problem in your family is that, is that generationally they do not value feminine, some feminine traits and qualities. And my suggestion for yourself, Pete, is to have a reflect upon what what judgments you personally have towards those feminine traits and qualities? Mm. Does that make sense? To feel what why that why you dislike them so much because you mm. you work. What does it make you feel? You know, yeah. what, how uncomfortable does it yeah, make you feel when she's feeling emotion? You feel like you've got to you you feel like you've got to help her make her emotion go away. And this is something you've been taught from a young age. Your dad does it all the time with your mother, yep. and and you know you, you've been taught this. You, you feel an imperative to do it. Like you feel Distressed. you must, yeah. must do it. You must do it. Yeah. And, and you've got to give it up because, because basically what you're saying to the woman is that when she's crying, she's weak and she's, you know. Rejected, really. You, you, she's almost, yeah. She, her, her very nature is being rejected. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very hard for a person whose very nature is being rejected to feel sexual attraction. Do you follow? Yeah. It's only when your nature is being, uh, and when I'm not talking about your flawed nature here, I'm not mm. talking about your wife's flawed nature or parts of her nature that are flawed. I'm talking here about the parts of her nature that God created that are perfect in there, like yeah. uh, that she'll develop perfectly in yeah. the long run. And, and if you don't honour them, it's going to be much harder for her to develop them, but it's also going to be much diff more difficult for you guys to have a close relationship. Well, we're re really rejecting, like if I do anything of the same with Pete, I'm re we're rejecting our own soul. Like we're rejecting you, each other completely. That's the irony of this. If you guys are soulmates, yeah. right, and that's something you've, I know you've yet to determine, yeah. but if you are soulmates, then basically what you're doing is you're rejecting qualities that 
half of your soul has in an effort to become yourself. Yes. Mm. Obviously, the two things don't make any sense. No. The only way you're going to become yourself is by accepting all the qualities that your soul has, yeah. not rejecting them. And it's sort of like as you grow towards God, there's parts of you that are injured, you know, that you want to let go of, and there's parts of you that God created that you want to develop. And you just need to be careful that you're developing the ones that God created, not rejecting them, and not letting go of the ones that, you know, you created or injuries. someone else yeah. put into you uh, and not growing those. And that's where I am at the moment. I'm going with all, all my injured parts. And well, not all of them. There are some parts of your nature that are really parts that we can see that God created inside of you too, you know, so. So, so please don't assume that you have nothing inside. <laughs> it's just the thing we're talking about today. Yeah, yeah, it's just the thing we're talking about today. Fair in our relationship. Correct. And well, no, there's things right now that have a huge positive bearing on your relationship that you have inside of yourself that you're accepting, and your and your wife accepts too, right? So, <laughs> so got to find them too. And, and yeah, it's interesting. You look at each other and you don't even know what they are. What's good, what's good about us? Yeah, what's good about us? And that's obviously an issue in itself. But, but, but the reality is that uh, generally most relationships are a mixture of those two things where, where, there's, where there's, actually, uh, there's actually four possible scenarios. One is there's a feeling within ourselves that God created and we reject it. Two, there's a feeling in ourselves or part of ourselves that God created that we accept, right? Yeah. And this applies to both of you. Yeah. Then there's f feelings in you that God didn't create, but you accept. Yeah. Uh, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> and then there's feelings in you God didn't create and you are working through them in an effort to release them, yeah. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. so, so there's those four particular scenarios that are going on inside of every person's relationship. And each individual in the relationship is going through those four particular questions, if you like, right? Yeah. And, and so, so that's a natural occurrence. The key is to work your way through the particular process without destroying yourselves in the process. Yeah. Does that make sense? Seeking those things that yeah, we talked about yesterday. Yeah. God's truth. How does God love? That where is our will at around this? And... <laughs> how humility. humble are how can I forget yeah. <laughs> how humble are we yeah. being personal responsibility I think for myself so a huge one to like bring it back to myself all the time rather than yeah playing. you know unfortunately most of us have been brought up with a degree of personal responsibility but a degree of responsibility for others and a degree of others taking responsibility for ourselves mm. so in other words we, we end up with this very fractured idea of responsibility part of which we think a third of us is responsible for ourselves <laughs> and the other third is responsible for somebody else and the other third is other people are responsible for us yeah. Yeah. and and the problem is we're not we, we've got to get rid of the other two and take full responsibility for ourselves yeah. the addictions all come into play when we don't take responsibility for ourselves completely and we want uh, we want to take responsibility for others or take others have to have others take responsibility for us and then what happens is we have a great distortion of you know we end up enter into codependent addictions in the relationship and that 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 all has to dissipate if if you're going to have a good relationship with somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I just mention one final thing as a general comment for yeah. uh, everyone viewing. Um, just on that point about forcing the competition with your spouse, like as in where you're trying to make your spouse share the qualities of your gender and deny their own qualities and be in a competition for that. Often we see that women in a partnership want their man to be more like a woman mm -hmm. and the man wants their woman to be more like a man yeah. and they end up, instead of valuing, as you Jesus was talking about earlier, instead of valuing those qualities as sort of two halves of a whole beautiful personality, they're often forcing this competition which just leads to dissatisfaction on both sides and it's a rejection of each other at a very basic level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a really yeah. common trait, I think, in farming and rural communities too. Like you see it a lot. Like in Honestly, Peter, just, it's a common trait in every relationship yeah. we've probably observed. Yeah. Where it's, a, it's, it's, it's so damaging too because what it does, you see, inside of a male, there is masculine traits and qualities that are male. And inside of a female, there are ma feminine traits and qualities that are female that aren't existing in the male and vice versa. And, and so... The problem is, is if you don't accept them, then you have no hope of ever becoming close. Mm -hmm. No hope at all. Yeah. And this is what we observe on the planet. You end up with women you know, going out and having their hens night, 
the guys go out and have their bug night before they're even married. Yeah. Right? And that and, continues. And that continues for the rest of life. You know, the, the women have a shower for the child and the men are not invited. You know, I, I tried to get myself <laughs> invited to one. <laughs> And Mary got uninvited as a result. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I uninvited. She uninvited herself. But, but you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. There, there is a, such a fragmentation yeah, of, of this. There is this, it's almost like this con- concept that men and women are like Mars and Venus, that, you know, Separation. you're on two different planets, you're two different types of people. I think there is a general idea in many people that they're actually two different, you know, like, the two different kinds of humans, species, <laughs> different <laughs> species, <laughs> even you know, yeah. and yeah. and not understanding the 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 need to honour yeah. and respect and love, come to love the uh, the true nature that exists within a soul, because you, you can't expect a soul union to occur while you're rejecting the very core qualities that God himself created inside of the other half of yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you're never going to become at one with yourself if, you, if you're rejecting one half of what God created. You know, it's never going to happen. And, and yet we see it happening all the time. And it is constant. It, men and women on the planet are in this argument, and I would classify it as a violent argument, actually, because mm-hmm. the majority of times it does turn into a violent argument between men and women. And... And it's very, very sad. There's no way that men and women are going to come closer together by engaging in that kind of argumentation. Mm. Mm. Something for you, Ella, on that point is obviously that your relationship with your dad and your upbringing in a very... uh, the value of masculine qualities of intellectualism and things like that has... and logic and and, um, worldly education and things has left you open to those projections from Pete. Yeah. Well, I value them more than I value the yes. feminine qualities yes. of myself you do. as yes. well. And, and to be honest, most women on the planet have a tendency to do the yeah. same, where they are scared of expressing their feminine qualities. Yeah. And they, they would prefer to have more masculine qualities, just like the men do, and, and compete with the men on their terms, is their, is, as the saying would yeah. go. Yeah. But the reality is, as soon as there's a competition, there's already a problem. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to address here. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I also feel the sadness of the rejection of myself, you know, like of the fact that, you know, all the, a lot of my ideas or the best things that I think of or whatever don't necessarily come through a book. They come through things that I might just feel about or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And yet I don't, I don't value those. No. I don't think they're as good as, as um, what someone else taught me. Yes, yeah. and my, a lot of women have become addicted now to learning and education yeah. Yeah. as a result, <laughs> where, where they believe now that they've read all these things, that yeah. it means they know things. But a lot of times me. all they've done is accepted the opinions of other men or women yeah. rather than actually yeah. having their own intuition. And the irony is out of all the education that I did, in the end, the only things that I felt that I really knew were things that I'd had an emotional connection yeah. with <laughs> as I learnt them or as I practised them, and yeah. they were with me still. But all the other worldly knowledge I was trying to get to feel like I was worth something, uh, you know. But it also skews, I reckon, just, oh, I suppose it might be a side, but it skews. You then have to really learn about, like I feel I'm beginning to learn about well, what's mine, like not what is everyone else feeling, what does yes. everyone else think. Yep. It's more what's mine, what do I really feel and what are my feelings? And yes. that's something that's really challenging to disengage because I'm so used to just taking what anyone else has and going, oh, that must be me too, yes. rather than going, no, no, I'm not like that, or yeah, I am like that, or no, I've got this other problem, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, what I thought we'd do is probably have a break now, yeah, so sure. we have 10 minutes for break and just uh, maybe mm-hmm. go Thanks, relieve guys. ourselves and whatever, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll talk the, the next part, we'll talk to cool. yourself, Eloisa, in terms of... And we'll just focus again on your acceptance of these particular emotions from Pete sure. and what's going on there. And perhaps the next time we get together, we'd like to discuss other matters with you. But we really we want to try and round out on the acceptance side of this particular right. group of emotions, what's really going on and why you go ahead and accept these particular things. That would be awesome. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 That'd be great. Good, Good on you, Pete. Thanks, you, guys. Thank you for your participation. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you.